gentle listener, and welcome to Nocturnal Transmissions, the fortnightly podcast that brings you dark tales both old and new, performed by voice artist Kristen Holland. It's that wonderful time in our release cycle when we issue forth a Patreon subscriber exclusive episode. What fun to have a little club, as it were, to share these dark moments together. We interrupt this episode for a brief announcement. This is a Patreon subscriber exclusive episode. Nevertheless, we will still be sharing this little taster, as it were, with you, our unsubscribed friends of the podcast. If you wish to hear this and our other Patreon exclusive episodes in their entirety, just visit patreon.com forward slash nocturnal transmission. All right, on with the show. Watching and waiting. Now, brace yourselves. Our humble narrator, flushed with excitement after the warm response the last time he shared one of his favorite things with you. I'm speaking of episode 60, the infamous Bengal Ming has decided he wants to share another of his little indulgences with you. Our humble narrator is a little bit obsessed with early 20th century writer Hector Hugh Munro, more commonly known by his nom de plume, Saki. Well, Considering Saki's acerbic wit, caustic humor, and positively corrosive cynicism, what's not to like? Today we'll be sharing one of his briefer morsels of amusement with you. Brief, but classic. Before we do that, though, we need to welcome our new acolytes, Bobby Corbett and Ari Fastad. Welcome. Now, without further ado, Nocturnal Transmissions is proud to present The Open Window by Saki. My aunt will be down presently, Mr. Nuttall said a very self-possessed young lady of fifteen. In the meantime, you must try and put up with me. Frampton Nuttall endeavoured to say the correct something which should duly flatter the niece of the moment, without unduly discounting the aunt that was to come. Privately, he doubted more than ever whether these formal visits on a succession of total strangers would do much towards helping the nerve cure which he was supposed to be undergoing. "'I know how it will be,' his sister had said when he was preparing to migrate to this rural retreat. "'You will bury yourself down there and not speak to a living soul, and your nerves will be the worse than ever for moping. I shall just give you letters of introduction to all the people I know there. Some of them, as far as I can remember, were quite nice.' Frampton wondered whether Mrs. Sappleton, the lady to whom he was presenting one of the letters of introduction, came into the nice division. "'Do you know many of the people round here?' asked the niece, when she judged that they had had sufficient silent communion. "'Hardly a soul,' said Frampton. "'My sister was staying here at the rectory, you know, some four years ago, and she gave me letters of introduction to some of the people here. He made the last statement in a tone of distinct regret. Then you know practically nothing about my aunt? pursued the self-possessed young lady. Only her name and address, admitted the caller. He was wondering whether Mrs. Sappleton was in the married or widowed state. An undefinable something about the room seemed to suggest masculine habitation. Her 
great tragedy happened just three years ago, said the child. That would be since your sister's time. Her tragedy? asked Frampton. Somehow in this restful country spot, tragedies seemed out of place. You may wonder why we keep that window wide open on an October afternoon, said the niece, indicating a large French window that opened onto a lawn. It is quite warm for the time of the year, said Frampton. But has that window got anything to do with the tragedy? Well, there ends our little teaser, I'm afraid. If you would like to hear the rest of this story and our other Patreon-exclusive episodes, just join up on our Patreon page as a minion, acolyte, or cohort. The choice is yours. Normal services will be resumed in a fortnight's time. We look forward to seeing you then. Gentle listener.